Good day everyone. Today I am going to be going over array sorting in Delphi. Okay, so I'm going to be going over how to sort arrays according to a fairly simple algorithm. Um, I'm not really going to be going into the most effective sorting or anything like that. Just a, a pretty simple algorithm that can get you your arrays sorted in an easy manner, what you'll need for your IT. You might notice my Delphi installation is a bit different to last time. Let me know if you like it or let me know what you think of it. And I'm also thinking of going on to dark mode because it might look nicer. So let me know in the comments if you think I should go dark mode or if I should stay light mode. So if this looks different to your installation of Delphi at school, then that's not a problem at all. The code is just the same, it just looks slightly different. Okay, so I've set up a really basic program over here. It's just a simple program for sorting an array. So we've got a rich edit to display our output, and we've got a big button which is going to sort. If we have a look at the code, what I've done so far is, so we've got this button sort, which I have not coded, we have an array that I declared up here, an array one to five of integer. So it's a, an array which contains five integers. And then down here, as soon as the program starts, I give the array some default values. And then I made a quick little function to display the array. If you don't understand functions yet, if that's not something you've done, uh, functions and procedures, then don't worry about it for now. Basically, all you need to know is that the array is going to display when we're done with it. So if we run the program right now, then as you can see, it just displays the array's content. So we've got 21, 11, 56, 27, and 64. And what we want is when we press the sort button, we want to see this organized in ascending order. So that's our goal. So how are we going to get there? First, let me quickly talk a bit about the theory of how we're going to do it. And then I'll show you the actual algorithm. So I've created a little illustration over here so that I can show you what is happening to kind of illustrate how this algorithm works. So we've got, as you can see, we've got our five positions and our five different values. So 21, 11, 56, 27, and 64. I want you to think of how could you sort this? If you were trying to sort this out, what would you do? So there are many different sorting algorithms out there, many different ways you might think of organizing this, but I'm just going to show you a pretty simple one. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have two different pointers, okay? So we're gonna have two different numbers. We're gonna have red and blue over here, and we're going to compare them, and we're going to switch if we need to. So how this algorithm is going to work is we're going to compare this first number, 21, we're gonna compare it to the second number. So if we want this in ascending order, then we want the smallest number on the left, and we want the largest number on the right, and we want in between to gradually increase. Right now, we're just gonna focus on getting the smallest number to the left. So how we can do this is by comparing two numbers and looking, is 11 smaller than 21? So is blue smaller than red? Okay, so if blue is smaller than red, then we wanna switch it. So right now, blue is smaller than red. So we want to do a switch. Okay, so how do we want to sort these two numbers? So we want to take one of our numbers, it doesn't really matter which, and we want to take it to the side. Then we want to take our second number and put it where our first number was. And then finally, we want to take our first number that we put off to the side and put it into place. And now we've swap the two around. As you see, I didn't switch our pointer because our pointers are still pointing to the same place. So red is still pointing to position one and blue is still pointing to position two. It's just that the values have changed. Why, why did I not switch them? Because we wanna keep this logic going. 
but now we're going to move blue one forward. So why are we doing this? Because we want to see, okay, we switched 11 and 21 because we know 11 is smaller than 21, but we don't know whether 11 is smaller than all of these other numbers. So now we need to do this comparison again. We need to just keep doing this comparison. Is 11 smaller than 56? It is, so we don't need to switch. So we can just move blue along again, ask ourselves the same question again. Is 27 bigger than 11? Is blue bigger than red or is blue smaller than red? Blue is bigger than red, so we don't need to do anything. And finally, with 64, same question. Is 64 bigger or smaller than 11? 64 is bigger than 11, so we don't need to switch. So in this question, it was pretty easy because our smallest number was right in position 2. So we got our smallest number right to the start. So we've made some progress. This is a bit more sorted than it was before, but it's still not 100% sorted. We've gotten the smallest number to the left, but we haven't done anything apart from that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the cycle, but we're moving red one forward. And now we're going to compare position two to all of the numbers that are ahead of it. We're going to compare all of these and we're going to see, do we need to switch or do we not need to switch? So then we'll get our second smallest number into our second position because our smallest number already on the left, we don't need to worry about that anymore. So we can ignore that because we know that that is sorted in ascending order. So we just need to sort the rest of it. So we ask ourselves, is 21 bigger or smaller than 56? 21 is smaller, so we don't need to change anything. Is 21 smaller than 27? 21 is smaller, don't need to change anything. 64 is smaller than 21, so again, we don't need to change anything. So now we know for sure that 11 and 21 are our two smallest numbers. So we've sorted up from position 1 to position 2. Now we need to sort position 3. So again, doing the same thing. We're going to take 56 and we're going to compare it to 27. Is 56 bigger than 27? It is bigger than 27. So we need to switch because our blue is smaller than our red. How are we going to switch? We do the same thing we did before. We take one of our numbers, keep them to the side, bring this one over, and then take the one that we put to the side and put it into place. So now we've got 11, 21, 27. So that's nicely organized. Then we have to do the check again to see is 64 bigger than 27. It is, so we don't need to do anything. Then once more, we can bring our red over here and we can see is 56 smaller than 64. 56 is smaller than 64, so we don't need to do anything. So then we're done. So our red started at the beginning and ended up at the second last position. And our blue was the one that cycled a lot more it started from red plus one, started one ahead of red, and it went to the end every single time. No matter where red was, started one ahead of red, and then it went to the end. So now that we have done that, you can see that it is sorted in ascending order. So how are we going to turn this logic into code? Let's have a quick look at that. It might seem a bit daunting to turn that into code, but it's actually not too bad. All right, so looking at our code over here, I've declared a few variables that we're going to use. We're going to have an outer loop and we're going to have an inner loop. Why are we going to have an outer loop and an inner loop? Because as you saw with this diagram, our red is our outer loop and our blue is our inner loop. Blue cycles from red plus one up to the end and red slowly cycles from the first one all the way over to the second last position. So we're going to have two loops. So our first loop, we're going to have four I outer. So where does it start? It starts at position one. And where does it end? It ends at our final position. So in this case, we've got five elements. It ends up at our final position minus one. It never actually reaches the very end because otherwise where would blue go? 
So it goes almost to the very end, but not quite. So 5 minus 1, or 4 in this case. Okay, and then we're going to have another loop. 4 i inner, okay, and where does this one start? So this one, it depends on where red is. It starts where red is plus 1. So if red was in position 2, then your blue starts in position 3. So it starts at i outer plus 1, and this one goes all the way to the end every time. It goes all the way up to 5. All right, so we've got for i outer is 1 to 4, for i inner is i outer plus 1 to 5. So inside here is where we actually need to sort. Okay, so we've set up our red and our blue into position. So once they're in position, what do we do? We've got red over there and we've got blue over there on the first run. So what do we do? Then we have to compare. Is blue smaller than red or is red bigger than blue? So is our eye outer bigger than our eye inner? But we're not just talking about our number, we're talking about, we're not asking whether one is bigger than two, we're asking whether 11 is bigger than 21. So we have to access our arrays value. So we're talking about our array. So what's our array called? It's called array values. So we take array values and we're looking at i outer and we're asking, is it bigger than the array values i inner? So how do you remember which one is which? How do you remember if i outer must be bigger than i inner or i inner must be bigger than i outer? Getting that mixed up, the only difference it's going to make is that instead of ordering in ascending order, it'll end up ordering in descending order. And you can think about why that's true for yourself if you want to, but it's true because just by doing the opposite check, we switch around if the smaller number is lower in the list. So we would switch 11 and 21. And by repeatedly doing that, we end up with a situation where we're going to have our smallest number at the end and our biggest number at the beginning. It's not the end of the world if you do the wrong sign. You can test your program out and just switch the sign if you need to. So let's do that. Let's see, is that going to work? Is that going to be ascending order or is it going to be descending order? It's easy just to test it out. If your outer is bigger than your inner, what do we want to do? We want to switch. So how did I do the switch over here? Remember, I had to take one of these to the side and remember it so that when I brought the 11 over here, it didn't cover the 21. We had to move it to the side. So the same thing happens in code because if I didn't move it, if I just took the 11 and put it on top of the 21, then it would end up overwriting the 21 and then we wouldn't remember what number was there originally. So we need to have a variable called it I swap over here that stores our array value and you can pick one of them it doesn't matter so I'm going to go with I outer we're storing that temporarily so that we can do the quick swap so now we're gonna replace our I outer with our I inner we're replacing our first value with our second value and then finally we have to replace our inner value with the swap variable, so with the one that we remembered. So in other words, we're just swapping our i outer and our i inner around, but can't just do that because if we took that 11 and overwrote that 21, and then we copied from here back, then we just end up with two 11s. So that's why we need that swap variable. That's why it's very important. Once we've done that swap, we've set up already all the infrastructure we need for it to happen every single time the loop runs. So that's all the code we actually need in order to solve our problem. So let's give this a run and see how it works. So we've got 21, 11, 56, 27, 64. And if we sort it, we get 11, 21, 27, 56, 64. 
so it has been sorted. And just to illustrate, if I switch the sign over here, what happens when we run it and when we sort it, we get 64, 56, 27, 21, and 11. So that is a sorting algorithm, and I hope it serves you useful. If you continue studying in IT, then you'll learn all about different types of algorithms and which ones are more efficient. But for now, this one definitely does the job. So I hope that was helpful to you, and if you have any questions for me, or any requests for what I should cover next, then please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, then like and subscribe. I would really appreciate the support, and it would encourage me to keep making these videos. If you want to contact me for private tutoring, then look in the description for the link to my website. But more than anything, thank you for being here. And remember, you are smarter than you think.